Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, January 18th, 5.30 a.m. Central Time. Corn and soybean markets higher this morning. March corn futures up two and a quarter at 4.44 and a half. March soybeans up seven and three quarters at 12.13 and a half. That March soybean contract tested those report day lows overnight. March Chicago wheat down one at 5.81 and a half. March Kansas City wheat up two at 5.96. March spring wheat up six and a quarter at 6.86 and a half. We got a whole bunch of China headlines to start the day and none of them are good. China's soybean demand is expected to decline. China is expected to import about 18.5 million tons of soybeans in the first quarter of this uh, in the first quarter of this year, down 20% from last year. At least half of those imports are slated to be U.S. soybeans. The reduction in soybean demand stems from shri shrinking hog numbers, poor, poor prices, high input costs, and an outbreak of African swine fever have reduced hog numbers. Uh, increased soybean inventories have also impacted demand. China imported a three-year high of 99.4 million metric tons of soybeans in 2023, up 11% from 2022. So this first quarter import number, if these analysts are correct, 18 and a half million metric tons, that would be the smallest first quarter import number since 2020. We had this chart and I updated it this morning. It's gotten worse. The crush margins on imported soybeans are very bad. Um, they've got an ample supply of soybeans and meal and the hog numbers are declining. They're sending hogs to market early because nothing works. Um, one analyst uh, cited in this Reuters piece said this, crushers are suffering losses due to decrease in soybean meal prices. It's unlikely for them to quicken the pace of buying. Uh, further weighing on demand is Beijing's food security driven push for feed makers to lower the soy content in feed. I don't know that that's the story here. I think that's a, a maybe a secondary story um, for the full year. They're still talking like an increase of one or two percent in Chinese soybean imports. So USDA's got the number at 102. Uh, it was uh, just south of 101 last year. That number could come down slightly. It could be maybe 100 by the end of the day. You know, if you take two million off of that, that's probably another two million you can afford to lose um, when it comes to Brazilian production, uh, something along those lines in terms of the global balance sheets. So the China situation is is not good, and I think this is. This may be the, the biggest reason why the soybean market's been under pressure. This may have um, more to do with it than anything out of Brazil or Argentina. The fact that our largest soybean importer is just having a lot of problems. China's population is trending downward. Last year, China recorded about 9 million total births, a decline of more than half a million compared to the previous year. China's population dropped by 2.08 million, million last year, more than twice the decline of 2022. Local governments have tried matchmaking and even cash incentives to promote births. Economic uncertainty is one of the main reasons for the decline in the number of babies. In 2023, China's GDP rose by 5.2%, slower than pre-pandemic levels of over 6%. So the one-child policy in China, which went from 1980 through what 2015, uh, did not work out very well um, in hindsight, of course. Uh, China is no longer the world's most populous country. India took over uh, last year or two years ago. So this is a problem. And even um, this is the quote about the last year. China had fewer than half the number of births in 2023 than it did in 2016 when they abolished the one child policy. Um, the fertility rate is one, which means uh, per one woman, she'll have one child throughout her lifetime, which is ultra low, according to demographers. So this is more like not this isn't stuff that's going to move the market today. But big picture is China going to continue to increase grain imports, soybean imports every single year when they've got this population, not in free fall, but declining. I mean, it's just, it's not a good look at all. So if you guys have not checked out our premium content, you need to do so. Joe, can you tell me about the video you put together yesterday with Brian Split? Brian was on yesterday's on every other Wednesday. We do charts and the, uh, the trillion dollar question, question at this point, where is the bottom in the grain markets? Uh, Brian tried to paint some uh, support areas, gave us some ideas in terms of like, where is some technical support on the corn chart, the soybean chart, the wheat chart? Also some worst case scenarios too. So it wasn't all uh, friendly. It's kind of uh, both sides of the argument, I guess. If you want to see the premium stuff, go to standardgrain.com. Sign up this morning. This is a $50 per month subscription. You can cancel at any time. 
No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. This is the best way to support what we're doing here, guys. We don't have any sponsors. The uh, premium subs are the only reason we're able to wake up and do the podcast and do YouTube every single morning. So check this deal out. If you guys like what we're doing um, on the podcast and on YouTube, you'll love the premium stuff, I promise. China's economy continues to face challenges. During the fourth quarter of 2023, China's GDP rose by 5.2%, falling below the expectation of 5.3%. For the full year, GDP increased by 5.2%, up from 3% in 2022, but still historically low. China's economy has struggled due to, a, due to a lack of investment in the property sector. Investment in real estate declined by 9.6% in 2023. China's unemployment rate for people between the ages of 16 and 24 was 14.9% in December, which was actually an improvement from 21.3% in June when the last figures were reported. China's GDP is forecast to slow to 4.6% this year unless significant stimulus, stimulus measures are implemented. So you have seen GDP decline the last several years. Like it's, there's been a lot of back and forth. Um, so there was some good stuff in the mid nineties. There was some good stuff, what, 2005, 2006. And now we've kind of backed off here. So, um, people don't believe the, the economic data out of the United States. I don't know why you would believe the economic data out of China, if that's your uh, stance, but in any case, we've got three Chinese headlines, none of which are positive and China being the world's largest soybean importer corn importer, I think largest wheat importer, um, we're up there. This is, um, it's just problematic. It's problematic. It's not good news. According to Earth Daily Agro, soybean yields in the Brazilian state of Mato Grosso are, are projected to be 15% below the trend of the past 15 years. The last time yields dropped that low was back in 2016 when they fell to 13% below trend. The firm is forecasting Brazil's soybean crop at 149.2 million tons. The estimate is well below CONAB's projection of 155 million tons and the USDA's estimate of 157 million tons. Yeah, the question is how much damage did this early drought do? They've done a lot better in terms of rainfall uh, so far in January, at least in Mato Grosso and kind of like your uh, eastern areas. And then your like mid-south areas, uh, still like half of normal precip or less during the month of January. So there's absolutely some problems in Brazil. And this was a crop that, you know, soybean crop that had the potential to do 165. And now we may struggle to hit 150. So it's it's absolutely going to be off. And I think the market just is not overly interested in that story. It was back in November. It was back in November. We absolutely traded this, but we traded it two months ago. And it just doesn't appear as if we're trading it here today. Uh, the forecast still looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's wet. The next five days are kind of spotty. But over the next 10 days, you're going to see at least a couple inches of rain just about everywhere. So this uh, story that the lower crop estimates just has not been able to rally the soybean market at all. U.S. retail sales were strong last month. Retail sales grew by 0.6% in December, up from a 0.3% gain in November. Economists were projecting a 0.4% increase. Retail sales, excluding auto and gas, climbed by 4.9% last year. The rise in retail sales indicates that the economy is performing well. Experts believe the economy is doing well enough that a reduction in interest rates is not necessary to keep it afloat. Yeah, the uh, March, uh, the odds of a March rate cut are now down to 61 percent, according to the CME Fed tool. And that number was as high as like 80 something percent, I think, just a few weeks ago. Um, here's a quote. Consumers, consumers were willing to spend during the holidays and will remain inclined to do so as long as real income gains more than offset the drag from elevated interest rates and tight lending standards. OK, I know the uh, the this, the comment we'll get here is, Joe, people are running up credit card debt. And when I hear that, I've, I've sent this tweet to a lot of people. This is Callie Cox on Twitter. Uh, the percentage credit card debt as a percentage of total deposits is very low. So of course, credit card debt, like in a vacuum, the number, whether it's um, a trillion or 2 trillion or 3 trillion, of course it's gonna go up because we've got 25%, 30 and 30% 30 inflation over the last three years, but people have more money, people are making more money. So the, uh, the consumer credit card uh, debt story is uh, not entirely accurate. It needs to be put into context. What did cattle do yesterday? So after a slow start, cattle futures closed higher on Wednesday. 
Feeder cattle futures closed an average of 83 cents higher. Live cattle futures closed an average of 45 cents higher, except for two cents lower in spot month in spot month February. Production losses in the processing sector of the industry, mainly uh, weather related, have substantially boosted box beef prices. Yesterday, choice ended the day at 298.45, that was up 346. Select ended the day at 283.02, that was up 304. Outside markets on Thursday, U.S. dollars off a little bit. Stocks attempting a recovery. The S&P's up 14. The Dow's up 20 points. Bonds are flat. Crude oil's up 21 cents in the February WTI at 72.77. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you on Friday.